Can now bring in our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Doug, great to see you. Uh, a fresh round of explosions uh, in Lebanon on Wednesday, targeting devices used by uh, Hezbollah. Um, we have Hassan Nasrallah, who's going to speak in the coming hours. What are we expecting? Are we expecting this militant group to double down or back down? Yeah, uh, there's two sides of this coin, obviously. Um, it is indisputably this was a humiliating blow to Hezbollah. It exposed not only its vulnerability, but essentially calling out the failure of its senior commanders to be able to protect its own militants, to, to, uh, to be able to provide security for them against these types of breaches and breaches um, by uh, all reckonings uh, by Israel, its arch enemy. That's what most in the region are saying. It bears all the hallmarks of uh, Mossad. So basically, uh, Mossad being able to penetrate the inner ranks of Hezbollah. And what makes it even more humiliating is that it was on, apparently, Nasrallah's own uh, orders uh, back earlier this year uh, for his fighters not to use um, their, their mobile phones, their cell phones, because they were ob obviously much riper targets for surveillance or potential surveillance uh, for movements and, 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 and whatnot. So the low-tech option of turning to pagers uh, was seen as a much more viable and secure way of communicating uh, immediate real-time battlefront communications and sending messages within their ranks. Um, in the short term, uh, what this means for Hezbollah, whether or not they're going to uh, go on the offensive right away, retaliate. Retaliation does seem obviously more and more likely. They themselves have made this very explicit. Not This isn't speculation. Um, what makes it harder in the very short term, the immediate term, is that their internal communication system has been knocked out. Now, there's been, you know, uh, observers in the region, security experts, cybersecurity experts are, are saying, well, there are other ways they could try to, in the short term, get their security and their communications back up. They could use actual physical couriers, people mm. traveling by foot. That's hard when you have a widespread out uh, mil military infrastructure. Um, you could use local landlines, but those are also subject to surveillance and yeah. hacking. You could use the very old style satellite phones, but those are very, very costly and also subject to hacking. You could use cell phones um, for, for a little while. For now, Iran and at the access of resistance, uh, they have signaled that they are perhaps uh, ready and willing to defend Hezbollah and to help it to re-establish um, deterrence vis-a-vis -vis Israel. That's according to the Institute of the Study of War in the short term. Uh, Doug, uh, when the war with Hamas broke out over in Gaza, it seemed like Israel didn't want a war on two fronts, but now it looks like Israel is fishing for one. What's its end game here? Well, look, Israel has been clearly, at least Israel's government, Net Benjamin Netanyahu, and is uh, very, uh, there's no other way to, uh, to describe it, it's far right, very belligerent war cabinet, a cabinet that war cabinet has been on a, a, a real war footing for, for months now. Um, they have signaled that they are now moving the center of gravity, or at least trying to, their intention is, uh, away from the Gaza theater of war. It's not that they're not obviously continuing the Gaza operations with often devastating consequences, moving it more towards the so-called northern front along uh, the border with Lebanon, where uh, Hezbollah is based, along that so-called both sides of that UN-drawn blue line. Um, and and we had Netanyahu signal that in recent days. And, and the cabinet itself, the political and security cabinet, met earlier this week and made it an explicit war aim to try to bring back thousands of displaced Israeli citizens to those northern uh, communities. So what's going on here? Is, uh, we do, is, is this the prelude to a ground offensive, to an all-out air campaign against Lebanon? Or is it simply Netanyahu signaling some tactical prowess and trying to keep the country on a sort of militaristic war footing so in order to protect his own interests? Because because he is beholden to a very belligerent uh, cabinet that basically has him by the throat. And if he shows any signs of weakness, his government can fall. And if he were to fall, he could face consequences, including before a court. Let's talk about the United States for a second, because we're going to have uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, uh, yeah. in Paris later on today. Um, the U.S. says it is working hard to secure a ceasefire. We actually saw Blinken in, in uh, Cairo just yesterday. That won't be possible with a full-blown war with Hezbollah if one breaks out between Israel and Hezbollah. Where does this all leave Washington? Does Washington have sway over Israel at all anymore? It leaves Washington between a rock and a hard place because officially, as you know, Delano, the persistent line from the beginning of this conflict is, quote, Israel has the right to defend itself and the U.S. has stood four square behind that official policy. Unofficially, you could, I said this yesterday, we could see, you could see more and more of the frustration 
uh, in the faces of the diplomats, diplomats who have to, by definition, speak in diplomatic language. But Anthony Blinken has been very clear that each of these types of flare-ups, I'll call them flare-ups, I'll use mm. a sort of mild euphemistic term, but each of these flare-ups and these incidents make it that much harder to arrive at a negotiated settlement, yeah. to secure an already elusive ceasefire. Washington has expressed its frustration in the past at what it sees as being snubbed by Israel, its its closest ally in the region. Um, and back in April, um, you know, back in July, I'm sorry, when Ismail Haniye was, was killed in that apparent targeted strike by Israel in, uh, in Tehran, Iran. Um, it, at the time, Washington was outraged at the fact that it was not in on the loop at all about that, as it was back in April when two senior Iranian commanders were targeted targeted near a diplomatic facility in Damascus, once again purportedly by Israel. They've been out of the loop. They have been losing their leverage. They've been losing their influence.